Hello and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Join us here at each show where we visit RV products and services and RV tips, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So relax, grab a cup of coffee, let's talk about RVs. Hey, hello everybody, this is Rob from Las Vegas this week. Welcome to the show, glad to have you. Been an interesting week. We decided to uh, do two weeks here at Las Vegas at the Oasis RV Resort and been having a good time, <laughs> spent a little money, but that's Vegas for you. So uh, <laughs> all I can say is uh, we've been donating a lot. <laughs> So I guess the best thing is uh, we're keeping people employed, and that's a good thing. So anyway, got other things to talk about. Let's talk. Wanted to point out to everybody once again that, remember, this is a real podcast. Now, we also do a video version. You may be listening to this on, um, on YouTube, but we are actually a normal podcast radio station that's registered with iTunes and many, many, many other directories. And just want to let you know that some of you guys may not realize that you can listen to our show through your cell phone. And it's real simple. You just go to Google Play and, and download a free player like uh, Podcast Addict is the one I use. And when you put that in, you just go to the software and you go into the search category, type in RV Talk Radio, and you'll see our show. And there's other shows, too, to listen to. And you just subscribe. And then you can listen to us as you desire throughout the week. That's why our show is an hour show. So when you get a chance, try it. Get your cell phone. If you have a smartphone, download a podcast player and the cool part about all that is is if you have other hobbies and things you like to listen to or just find other talk shows there's podcasts about everything including our show and there's a couple other rv shows out there that are pretty good everyone's got a different flavor uh so we definitely are grateful that you listen to us but we're also grateful all the other shows out there so you get a chance Download a podcast player and get it on your phone and you can listen to us at your free will. Hey, we uh, really appreciate all the folks that are actually starting to contact us a little bit and talk to us and, and give us comments and ideas and questions. We love all that and just want to remind you, if you'd like to contact us, just go to rvtalkradio.com and go to our contact page, fill out the form there, and once again, you're not getting any junk mail or anything. You're just, uh, if, uh, if you hear anything from us, we'll reply with a, an answer if you need one. But please, contact us. Let us know what you're thinking. And you can also contact me directly at rob at rvtalkradio.com. And let us know what you're thinking or what kind of things you'd like us to talk about. Our subject today will be Las Vegas. And it's going to be RV oriented, obviously. But let you know kind of what we're doing here at, at um, the Oasis RV Resort, which is a five-star resort for RVs. And it's actually right on the Strip, actually. But not really. It's down the road about three miles from the Strip. And a very convenient location. So, when you get the chance, please contact us. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, the other thing I wanted to remind you about is uh, an application that we've been kind of pushing that we thought was kind of cool, and we actually almost had to use it the other day, is an application that you can put on your cell phone. And it's called Go Mechanic. And what it's designed to do is to bring help to you. Not you to them, but them to you. And it's designed for tires and windshields, um, RV mechanics. It'll come to you. And a lot of times you get into an RV park, <laughs> you don't want to move again. Got all your stuff out. Maybe you have uh, having problems with a hot weather heater or you have a, a chip uh, windshield or something like that. <clears throat> That's when it's really nice to get someone to come to you. So once again, the application is called Go Mechanic. 
um, you can go to their website at gomechanic.us, not .com, but US, and check them out, see what it's all about. It's a great program, <clears throat> and I highly suggest you use it. Anyway, Go Mechanic. Okay, but before we get started, there's one more thing I want to talk to you about. And I've been real subtle about all this, and maybe I shouldn't be, and maybe I should start sticking my neck out a little more. But, you know, watching some of these shows on YouTube uh, and hearing all these terrible disasters and my transmissions out, or I broke this, I broke that, and it's going to cost me way, you know, <laughs> funds I can't afford and on and on. And I have news for you that RVing is not really like that all the time. <clears throat> but the reason is, is, I mean, there's more well, uh, you know, people with decent income that, that are doing this. And the way that they're doing it is they're using while well, they have the income, they, they save their money, and not only that, they have protection. And so that's why I've been keep, on, on the show, I keep bringing this up, and we actually tied in with Good Sam. And and I have a Good Sam warranty, I, I do. And I, I, oh my God, I've used it, and it saved me thousands. And, and so I wanna talk about it one more time, and I'll probably keep talking about it, is we hooked up with Good Sam Sir, uh, the service warranty plan, extended service. And what it's designed to do is protect you from mechanical problems that cost a lot of money, and especially when you're outside of your area and you're not familiar with an area. And so in our description down below, I urge you to pause the show, click on the link, and go get a quote, just a free quote. And a free quote, for getting extended warranty plan on your RV and your vehicle too is absolutely free. And the setup we have with them is if you get a free quote, you will also get a free $10 gift certificate for Camping World. And I don't know anybody that doesn't go to Camping World. So please take the time, get a quote, and find out if you can protect yourself a little bit so when you're out and about and you have a disaster happen and it's going to cost you, you're protected and it will just be a little bit out of pocket and the, the warranty or the, the uh, extended plan will cover the rest. Check it out. Go, go right now. Pause us. Go get a quote and find out if they can help you in an affordable way to protect your RV. As I was getting ready to do this section of the show, I actually uh, was monitoring my YouTube account and a video just came out from a friend of mine, John from uh, Blacktop Boondocker. And he had a, sh uh, a video called Disclaimer. <laughs> and uh, he has a point there. You know, you got to remember that these shows we're doing are entertainment. They're entertainment only. And we try to give tips and ideas and stuff like that. But we're far from being experts. We're not experts. And we just tell you what we're doing that helps our problems. And we'll show you products and things that we're using. If it helps you, great. But we are not professionals at fixing things. I am not a mechanic. I was never a welder. I was never a... I did do electronics for aerospace industry, but um, <laughs> it doesn't apply to RVs. It's a whole different monster. Anyway, I got to tip my hat to John. He did a great video just saying, guys, I, you know, we'll talk to you and we'll tell you what we're doing and we'll share our stories and how we fix things and how we supported our family and our equipment. But uh, doesn't mean it's right or wrong. And yes, we do want to make sure that you uh, do give us your comments. We do appreciate that. We do like constructive feedback. But some folks really take us maybe too serious. And uh, 
that's kind of important for you guys to remember that these shows we do is for fun. Uh, there's no big money in, in what we're doing here at all. It's kind of a thing we do because it's fun to share our stories, fun to hear from everybody, and it's nice to have the dialogue. It's not real fun to get the troll type stuff, but <laughs> anyway, John, that was a great video. I urge everybody to get a chance to go see and listen to uh, uh, Blacktop Boondocker, I believe is what he calls himself. And I'll try to remember, put a link in the description for folks to uh, go visit his website. He actually uh, has very stimulating videos. And uh, uh, all in all, he's, it's a good guy. And uh, so anyway, you get a chance, go watch his show. I would also have to think that maybe uh, he probably has witnessed some of the same things that we've been seeing. Is is we have there's folks out here like me and Sherry and stuff, and we're just n normal folks doing our shows here for entertainment, and then we try to collaborate with folks, and we uh, <laughs> we probably end up giving away a lot of things, and we try to help people and stuff. But I have found that the industry is a little bit, uh, I don't know, breaks your heart sometimes because we've dealt with folks where we've uh, helped them out and we've given out a lot of things for free and things like that and and not necessarily get <laughs> a very warm thank yous or, uh, or once they've gotten what they wanted out of us, we've noticed a few times that all of a sudden they disappear and the support's there and then they go off and do their thing and they've forgotten that um, folks tried to help them out the best they could with the particular resources we had at the time and we continue to grow. We're always wanting to help people out and sometimes uh, we maybe sometimes go overboard and, and uh, it, we get let down a lot sometimes because... Uh, it, it seems one-sided a lot of times. So we'll still be that kind, but I think we're going to be a little more cautious in the in the future. Uh, so it's just how it is. But what I wanted to talk about today is our week in a couple of days at Vegas and what it's been like. Other than getting our blown tire and losing part of our fender on our fifth wheel the other day, uh, we're, you know, we got the, to our Disney here at Las Vegas, and the first thing that we noticed, and we'll tell you more about what we've done in the last eight days, I guess it's been, is uh, we immediately noticed that the time was going very fast. Between actually having to do work issues like making our videos and, and doing our radio show and stuff, which takes times and uploading, uh, and then... Uh, <laughs> Like, well, I'll talk about that in a minute, but we found that the time was going way too fast. So we decided to add another week to our stay here, which is not that easy. This is a very, 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 very busy, busy park. So we go to the office and we say, oh, uh, can we stay another week? And it's like, the lady's like, oh, looking all over. She did find us another spot. We actually had to move the RV yesterday. Uh, to our new spot, which is not as nice as our first one because we got kind of a premium place before. And uh, uh, let's say there's a lot of money running around here. So uh, we got a pull through spot that actually saved us a little bit, paid for a week, saved us a little bit of money that way too. And so we decided to do two weeks here at Vegas because, you know, we do play, but at the same time we work at the same time. So the time goes by really fast. So what I wanted to do is kind of tell you a little bit of what we've done so far. And you probably might have seen some of the videos already that we've done based off of our short time here so far. One of the first things you probably noticed if you're watching our videos is we decided we've got to get some 360 video done. But we also want to do some um, interesting videos of the strip. Now, what you don't really know about Sherry and I is... Back in 2007, I think it was, six, Sherry and I actually were here for about six months. We actually lived in this park. Um, and I was doing internet marketing. And Sherry was actually working for Andre Agassi 
uh, in accounting to help them with their nonprofit organization. So uh, uh, we just kind of set up here and set up shop and and met some really good friends uh, while we were here. And so we have really good memories of the Oasis RV Resort. And uh, so when we lived here before, kind of lived here, uh, you get really uh, comfortable with understanding the roads and driving around and stuff. Where I don't know how many times, and I'll comment about some of the videos we've already made that we've done some videos driving the strip and I don't know how many comments I've been getting. It's like, boy, you guys are brave. It's driving that strip. That's intimidating. And it's like, uh, tell you the truth. It really isn't. The trick to driving the strip is patience and <laughs> defensive driving. Uh, you always want to watch out for the taxi folks. They're just in and out. There's the limos are a little bit calmer, calmer cause they don't want to dent their limos. And, uh, Every once in a while, you get this maniac in a sports car that's like, I don't know why they want to go through the strip fast because they're fun to watch. The best part about the strip is driving slow and seeing all the sights. So basically what we did is we mounted a GoPro on our windshield in the outside. So we used a suction cup thing, put a GoPro up. And at the Las Vegas sign, you always see the famous Las Vegas sign. There's a great place to pull off. So that's where we set up the equipment. So at the same time, we did two tr major trips, one in the daytime and one in the nighttime. And so we start at the Vegas sign and we mount the uh, GoPro on the outside of the windshield up high above the truck uh, at a wide angle. And then at the same time, we also mounted a the 360 on 360 camera on a mono stick in the back of the truck above the truck and ran them simultaneously as we did each trip so it really actually created quite a few videos because we don't want our videos to be too long because we have uh, uh, we have to try to keep them from five to eight minutes if we can and uh, but if you really want fun videos to watch you'll see regular video of daytime trip and a regular video of nighttime driving the strip and then you're going to see the new 360s we did of daytime driving the strip and nighttime driving the strip and what's so cool about those is you know yeah they're kind of long videos and it's just driving but with the 360 you can see everything i mean <laughs> in the craziness that goes on that is one insane town the best part about the videos is you don't have to sit through the stoplights. And uh, however, if you watch the nighttime videos, there's one place where we actually played the video while we were at an intersection because we were right up front and a big crowd of people were walking by and it was just funny to watch them. There's this loud and crazy and having a good time and stilettos and all kinds of wild outfits and, you know, party, party kind of folks. And they're just having fun and they're not driving or nothing. And that's, that's the place to be crazy. And so uh, we actually left the video on for people to see the crossing of a, one of the crosswalks. And it's the night videos that we did. And it's not, it's on both videos, the, the regular GoPro one, which is a regular video and also the uh, 360 which will come out next week next friday so i urge you to watch those videos kind of fun just kind of kick back and and just be amazed of uh the craziness and the fact that it's it's vegas people another thing we did uh later in the week is sherry and i went on a friday night to the fremont experience <laughs> and you know that that is good wording for it. Fremont experience. So driving there was no biggie. We drove, you know, like I said, we're used to driving Vegas. So we uh, drove to Vegas, got there, and we uh, found actually secured parking, which I kind of like better down there. And from that point on, the insane, <laughs> insanement started. So First of all, you can remember, it was kind of warm. And so I had to actually wear a light jacket. You probably see us wearing those red jackets all the time. Anyway, so I had to carry three cameras with me. One was the GoPro. 
on a little short stick and then we have the 360 which I like to use on that little short stick for um, kind of like a, a mini monopod uh, pod. and um, and then last but not least I actually carry the big G40 and so that one I kept in a bag <clears throat> so I I don't I mean I was switching cameras so darn fast I couldn't keep up with it all but uh, it was great we actually have video coming out with actually th a, a fourth camera Sherry was using the Sony and she actually did some videos and that actually captures some pretty cool stuff so we're gonna do a mixture on the video the standard video which will be a non monetized video because it's gonna have music in it that's uh, live music which is copyrighted music so we can make the video but we we have to shut off the monetization which is okay we don't care anyway so that's coming out pretty soon um, then uh, so we made a 360 of the insanement and then uh, we made regular video of the insane part of it and you know it's just all I can say is uh, I miss being young sometimes because you know the insanity of that place is just unreal I just I couldn't I can't even describe it but I never cracked up and laughed so much uh, Sherry and I really had fun but we were definitely old folks um, <laughs> skimpy clothes and uh, some of the a lot of uh, you can get pictures with uh, showgirls and there's stuff there that uh, and we had to be really careful what we filmed because you swing, swing the camera around and be some gal with uh, very little on and so we tried to <laughs> be as cautious as we could but uh, it was crazy lots of live bands at different parts of the of the Fremont experience and of course there's the show that they do on the hour of the canopy up above with uh, uh, music and, and uh, lights and the whole works and then the coolest thing they've added, which I haven't seen yet, was the zip lines. So, I don't know if you know that, but at the Fremont Experience now, they have two sets of uh, zip lines, a short run and a long run. And it's pretty insane, and, and, and it's kind of cool, because you can kind of tell that most people like to wait till the show starts, and then zip line through the show. So, it's got to be quite the experience, because you have all that lights above you, the show, then the music's outstanding and people all staring upward and you're flying through the air so, and people yelling woohoo and all the whole works and it was uh, insane and, and trying to record all that and trying to figure out how we're going to do the editing is going to be insane. So our when I do produce those, I think I'm going to put emphasis on the sound and the colors and the lights. And uh, so uh, I did a lot of shots of just the signs and and uh, uh, just to try to get a feel of the area. Uh, all of those videos coming from the Fremont would be mo non monetized because uh, uh, of the fact it would be copyrighted music in the background, and it's just how it is. But you can make those kind of videos, and 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 it's okay. You can have copyrighted music on it. You just can't monetize it. And so you'll get a note from YouTube. They'll say, you're not in trouble or anything, but uh, the people that have these, if there is any monetization on it, you, uh, Google will put their own stuff on it, and the funds will go to the people that own the copyrights of those mu of that type of music and stuff. But uh, <coughs> you just can't be, and that's part of this whole industry problem is greed. It's like, I don't want to put copyrighted music, and I can't get make money off my videos. And it's like, <laughs> you guys... Um, I don't, maybe a hand, one or two people that really count on those funds, but, um, it's more, like I said, <laughs> this is entertainment. And so we want to show you what it's like to go to the Fremont experience. And, uh, so those videos, when they do come out, it'll be a week or two. Um, you should get a kick out of them. We're going to keep them real. So that was our Fremont experience. And some of the other things that have been just miscellaneous things is uh, the Be at the Oasis is a gigantic park, by the way, and it's like, like hundreds of spaces here. And so it's not like your normal park. Uh, this place actually even has a restaurant. So Sherry and I have had a chance to at least finally get out to the hot tubs and relax. We met some really nice people. They have two pools, one's for the adults and another one's for kids. 
and and they do have a big community area and and a restaurant so i don't know if you uh see many places with restaurants but we did go over for lunch once get a burger it was great have a nice little store and uh just really relaxing and you you can actually come here and never leave the the resort and have a great time uh but for you know sherry and i it's kind of a vacation for us because of the things that we have planned in the future so we're really just enjoying it dropping some bucks this is how it is and uh <laughs> it's been a one-way street we haven't been getting much back we actually went over to the silverton casino yesterday and we wanted to go there to uh, they had an rv show there not a real big one and uh boy there were uh, a lot of you know the rvs there as far as well more trailers than there was anything but boy the motorhomes sure seem expensive uh I think there are Thors, so I think that's part of the reason. But uh didn't see anything that really caught our eye. It was it had a couple Montanas there, and we have a Montana f- uh, fifth wheel. And those were fun to look at. I was kind of concerned at the fact that Montana seems to have gone with a darker wood, uh, more of like a cherry wood. So compared to ours, which were 2013, they seem to have switched to that darker wood, and then also the outsides have a tan color. They're not white like ours. And so they just seem a little dark. Um, I don't know. Uh, people might like that, but I wish they would have gone with a lighter interior. And maybe, you know, they change over time. So who knows what's going to go on with that, but uh, I hope Montana goes back to a lighter. I heard you can get op- I mean, maybe options to that, but I hope they go with a lighter wood and a lighter interior and it just brightens everything up but anyway uh the rv show was great of course we went into the casino and donated again but had a good time uh i guess the best thing i like is you can go to the casinos and and (laughs) get free drinks and and that's great i mean it's kind of fun but you know when you drop two hundred dollars and you get about two or three free drinks uh, your drinks cost about $50 a piece if you really look at it that way. So, <laughs> welcome to Vegas. So, uh, I, I've not really seen any big differences between the casinos here and, say, the Indian casinos and the places we live. Uh, in fact, if anything, I think the Indian casino has been doing a little better. But uh, we haven't gone into the strip, into the, any of the big uh, casinos at all. Uh, so we can be kind of talking about going like Mon- Mandalay Bay or MGM and uh, spending the day with um, the cameras and the whole works and, and playing in the big casinos and see see what it's like. But one of the big problems is having pets in this area. So that's the bad part is, you know, is we like to try to include Cinder with us on most of our trips but when it comes to las vegas uh it's limited it's not a lot of places and the other thing is we're getting into warmer temperatures you can't leave the dog in the car it's uh, we've actually had 70 and 80 degree weather we'll be pushing 90 i think today and uh you just can't leave a dog in the car and so cinders had to stay in the rv and she's been fine with that and she's well loved and I, i just feel guilty but it's hard to, um, you can't take her to the casinos and can't take her to the strip and she and can't go to these shows and you can't sit in the truck, of course. So I feel kind of bad that at least this two weeks, this is not the ideal place for Cinder. Uh, the cat's fine. She just says, hey, I own this video. In, uh, <laughs> I own this RV anyway. So when you guys leave, it's you're just out of my way. So the cat's fine. Uh, Cinder, she's like, oh, I want to go. And that's just not happening a lot. And she's actually been having trouble with her feet. So two things have happened. The kennel or dog park area, the bigger one for the big dogs, is gravel and a uh, hard pan underneath that. And it's uh, hurting her upper paws. Um, above her paws, there's a pad up there that when she runs around and slides anyway she's hurt uh, hurt herself there so 
she's a tenderfoot. That's all I can say. And then somehow she broke a nail on the concrete as we were just walking around. And so she, that's really tender. So poor baby, she's like kind of a tenderfoot. I don't, she comes from the Northwest where it's just rain and mud. So everything's soft, right? So this is definitely a, a shock for her. And the other thing I've noticed with Cinder is she's never been a real hot weather dog. And the colder, the better. She likes snow. She'll play in glacier water. She'll play <laughs> in ice. She loves the cold. You wouldn't think the short-haired dog like her would like the cold so much. So uh, it's going to, I think, take her a while to get used to these warmer temperatures. So, um, But yeah, she's just happy to be with her people, and she's well-loved. And, and uh, she is so spoiled. It's over the top. Anyway, Vegas is probably not the best place for your pets. Um, plan on making sure that they're comfortable being in your RV. Make sure that your uh, air conditioners are working fine and keeping them safe and keep them, you know, you know, lots of water available for the pets. So that's my recommendation. If you come down in an RV, plan on the fact that your pets are going to be limited to what they can do. Now, the big thing I've noticed here at Vegas is the food. <laughs> so, maybe it's not the big gambling towns it used to be anymore, but the food, over the top. So, we haven't gone to anything um, kind of special or, or expensive. And Lord knows there's plenty of those kind of places here. But I got to tell you, uh, I've had some really good burgers. <laughs> so... Uh, Silverton, they got a, um, a place there that makes burgers. Uh, I can't remember the name of John's Burgers or something. Johnny's Burgers. Oh my gosh, they made a mushroom burger that was so darn good. And then we also went down to South Point, and they had a place that specializes in burgers and shakes. And their burger was like, oh my goodness, it was good. I, I just, I don't know how you can mess a burger up. How some burgers are just really, really good, and others are just like, eh, eh, it's just a burger. But these were like burgers. Oh, they're just good. And then we've had a little bit of a, oh, kind of a gumption to get some Asian food. So we've gone to one place. Uh, that was at South Point, and it also had sushi. It was a Japanese place, really nice place. And what was really cool about that restaurant is when people walked in and got seated, they yell out kind of like some, I don't remember what the word was, but uh, it was in Japanese, uh, kind of a big welcome. And all the people that worked there would just do a big welcome. It was kind of like cheers, you know, when, guy, when Norm walked in, everybody goes, Norm! Anyway, well, that's what they do at this Japanese restaurant. So it was really good food, really nice people, good sushi, and reasonably priced. So we really enjoyed that. And then last night, we actually went to a Asian noodle place uh, that was pretty good. Uh, I just got a noodle chow mein chicken type of thing. Sherry got a, um, a Thai type of, why not Thai? Um, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it was similar to my my chicken dinner too and it was really good uh anyway so i don't know where we're gonna eat tonight <laughs> so, but i think vegas is i think if you can come down here and say yeah it's you know if you're young they want the nightlife it used to be coming down here was in the old days uh coming down and you'd bring a grand or two with you and, and have a good time in the casinos um, and that's changed a lot, probably because of all the Indian casinos. But as they say, you know, they're really starting to specialize in food. And, yep, they're right on the money there. So if you look at Vegas as over the top, lots to see, sore feet, warm, craziness, a drinks, uh, have a you know, glass. Um, if you like to have a little nip on the side and all that stuff. Uh, that, I mean, it makes it fun. Um, I prefer, you know, always social type of stuff. There's other people that probably go over the top, and uh, it's too bad on that part. But anyway, it's fun to be able to have a drink, 
not have to drive, go get really good food, drop a few uh, nickels and see what happens. <laughs> it's usually more than a few nickels. And, and But the food, it's all about the food here now. So if you want fine dining, trust me, almost anywhere you go is fine dining. If you want kind of quick, that's there too. But if uh, it seems like this, even the simplest of places seem to do a really good job at making the food good. And I think that's the big part of Vegas now. It's, it's, it's not gambling, it's food. And that kind of brings me to talking about our latest equipment. Um, so uh, I want to talk about two of our cameras. Uh, I told you a little bit of what we were doing at the Fremont, but I, I want to talk about the new G40. Uh, awesome camera. And we're still learning how to use it because it's got more contraptions to it. <laughs> so I was using manual mode and notice uh, when I was doing some zooming in that I had some close faces out of focus. And so I've got to kind of learn how to switch from manual to when I want to use automatic because there was so much going on at the Fremont jumping around from the different shots. Uh, I just got to get used to the camera. So it's going to take us a little time, but we're really happy with the G40 Canon uh, uh, Vixia. Good camera. Still learning how to use it. A lot of our videos are starting to incorporate it. The other thing I still like to put emphasis on is the 360 videos. I had somebody really plow after me about that and got ain't actually got angry with me because they they actually got in there and said, "Oh, it's foggy and it the sound quality is bad." And it's like, okay, it was like the third video we ever did on 360s, and I kind of barked back and said, "Really? Yeah, I mean, you you didn't have to have that." conversation in the public you could have just notified me but with the 360s let me re-emphasize what 360s are about first it's kind of a new thing and so the cameras are a challenge um, not only to use them but to edit them and then of course there's the third thing to watch them so I need to remind you that when we make the 360s they're very special. They're very fun. And you got to be in, you know, if you'd like to enjoy a whole new uh, ride <laughs> when it comes to watching videos, the 360s have a lot to offer. However, there's two ways of doing 360s. There's the, you've probably seen the, uh, where you can mount like eight to 10 GoPros on one big stick and then you have to edit all the film together. And do you realize that costs? probably would have about five thousand dollars invested just to do that and have the software to, to do that well recently they've started coming out with cameras that can do 360s at a reasonable price uh, i think kodak makes them and then we actually have our uh, ron uh, ron Roncor co uh, i think that's how i pronounce it uh, camera that we use and i have a link to it whenever we do 360 if you want to see what our camera looks like uh, we also have a camera review video coming out. So they are, you know, a big, you can't focus them just like GoPros. And so what you get is what you get. And so the one thing on, on those also is, uh, at least on our camera, you can't add a external microphone to them. You have to use the microphone built in. So, uh, we can't always get the audio the way we want it. Uh, some of the cool effects or some of the cool things that happen like weather, uh, we can't, unless we knock the sound out totally, uh, you're going to hear wind noise and things like that. So you just have to realize we're giving you the, the real thing, the real pictures of what's happening and it may not be perfect. And uh, they are, you know, like I'm sure over time, uh, it's going to get better and better and there'll be better and better cameras. So right now it's like uh, this is an opportunity for us to learn how when to use it, when not to use it. Also how to edit them is a real pain. Uh, you wouldn't believe what it takes for us to put a 360 video up. 
And and then the third thing is when you watch them on YouTube, you have to make sure that you at you're at high definition, 720 or above, to view them. And so people say, oh, I've switched it sometimes, and, and their browser won't respond. It's actually better to watch them on Chrome, if you can, or Firefox. The new Windows 10 has the new Edge uh, browser. It seems to be working well with the 360s. And then the other option you have is we try to upload them after we do the uh, YouTube uploads. We're now starting to upload the same videos up to Facebook. And Facebook actually handles 360s pretty good. And so they're really cool because you clip, click on them and they're uh, fairly clear. You can change the quality on, on your YouTube, on the videos from Facebook too. And they're really cool on a cell phone because on a cell phone you just hold it in front of you and tip it up or down. And uh, uh, there's a, ki a kick in the butt. So... Anyway, the 360s, once again, I'll tell you, it's it's either you like them or you don't. We appreciate it. If you like to give us feedback that's bad, please just shoot us a message. Most of the time when we get a message like that is because they didn't understand the technology. And it usually is the same thing every time. One is move the quality of your video player to HD high quality uh, and set or set your cell phone player quality higher and it will take the fuzziness away and it will be a fun experience if you just don't want to do the 360s that's why we just do them on fridays we understand we're not, we're not it's it's just something different we like to have, be on the edge a little bit a little bit of the cutting edge so anyway bear with us i'm sure over time that new cameras will come out and new software but to make a 360 video right now is tough and um there's just there's folks that are just into it like gamers or something like that so um it's just another world but if you want to enter into the world uh boy come on in it's really neat especially like the vi the videos we did going down the strip boy it's really cool because you can see the both sides of the strip and up down and hear all the noises and look behind us and see all the traffic and cars cutting in front of us and jaywalking and, and uh, craziness and it was really fun to do and then in the future, when the 360s are coming out of the Fremont experience, it's just really cool. There's just so much going on that the 360 captures all of it. So enjoy. Uh, I hope that you can learn to in, uh, how to watch 360s. As time goes on, we're hoping that better software comes out and maybe new versions of cameras that uh, give us more options, like how to deal with the sound and things like that. Um, when you have a bubble kind of fisheye kind of cam, uh, there's two lenses on a 360, you don't have any control on focusing anything. Like it's kind of like a, Go it's just like a GoPro. So it, I'm sure that those two things will change the better quality of the 360s and the audio probably will improve in the future too. But anyway, uh, Please shoot us questions if you have, uh, or if you'd like us to contact you and kind of help you find a way that you can watch them, uh, we'll be happy to help out. So just sh go to our Facebook, hit our message thing, and and our message button, and give us a holler, and we'll see if we can help you watch the 360s. Anyway, uh, there will be a lot of them in the future to come. I hope they get better and better, and we'll do the best we can. It struck me the other day that, boy, you know, the RV world still has a lot of uh, stereotype to get over with. And and I just want to talk about a conversation I had when we were in the hot tub. We were, in a, we were here enjoying the hot tub in the evening, and there's one a couple of couples that we met from Canada, really nice people. And then another one was in there, and they're a nice couple. And we asked them, well, where are you from? And they said, here. And I said, Wow, cool. And they said, yeah, we're, uh, we're living in our RV because we just, uh, and, and they were embarrassed. It was like, well, we live here, but we're using our RV to live in because the house rentals and stuff are so high. And I, you know, I think he got transferred here. And, and, but they kept trying to be kind of their, uh, you could tell that they were proud about it. They were kind of like embarrassed. And it's like, after they got talking with me and Sherry, I think they started feeling a lot differently. But 
um it was like well, what are you? that's great it's like uh they had a really nice rv and they're comfortable i go it sounds pretty smart to me if you're gonna especially if you're doing temporary work down in uh, vegas uh why get caught in a one-year lease in a house and you're gonna have uh, house rentals are really high and, the, and it's not so much the rent so much as it is the utilities that'll kill you um here it's the electricity that will kill you because of air conditioners and so really even here at oasis so you'll be dropping you pay for your electricity here on a monthly rate let's say your rent comes out to a thousand to twelve hundred a month here remember this is a five-star place uh you'll never find a house to rent down here at that affordable with all your utilities and not to mention all the amenities that are here so i don't know it's like it's just never seems to stop um the other thing is is it's really i get caught up in it too i watch all these videos and these so many of them like trying to save a buck and and trying to live little and trying to live without a real job and things like that and i have news for you and and this i make this loud and clear that's not the case uh i can tell you right now i see hundreds of RVs coming in and out of this place that are folks making, you know, uh, either living off their pension or living off their uh, retirement or people with jobs. There's a lot of people down here using their RVs and fifth wheels, nice rigs that are union workers for um, uh, electricians or, or I met a superintendent that helps build uh, prisons and stuff like that. There's some real professionals, not a couple, not a few. A lot and so the only thing that I've noticed is us is is a lot of them just don't care they're just doing what they need to do and they're using their RV as a tool and a resource and some of them are just using it as their home it's like makes sense to me what's the what's whether you make a hundred thousand or two hundred and fifty thousand a year there's those folks are living in RVs because one they're luxurious and comfortable and it just makes sense. And if you're in a job where you can work virtual or you're moving from location to location, it is not unusual to find these people that have careers, good careers, using their RVs. And we're talking thousands, not a few, a thousand. So when you're watching the videos and stuff, uh, I know you see these folks are like, oh, they get trying to save money and and they're trying to do this without a job and things like that and that's the few the majority are normal everyday folks that either you know are raising kids have kids right now they have in, uh, careers where they're mobile or they are retired and it just makes more sense to live in an rv with nice amenities which is so much better than being stuck with a house have any yard to take care of and utility bills and and taxes that just suck a well senior folks dry just to maintain that and so uh you really need to go and realize go to the big cities go to these rv parks and you're going to see thousand dollar um you know multi thousand dollar well a <laughs> hundred thousand two hundred thousand dollar motorhomes and higher uh, fifth wheels that are shiny and gleamery and we're talking about uh, you can still be a f person making well under under a hundred thousand and be living in a beautiful beautiful fifth wheel i mean top brand new great and stuff and and actually have maybe five six hundred dollar payments a month on it who cares and then rent it and uh, get a place to rent for six hundred a month that's a bargain compared to owning a house and that's what people are doing. That's the real world. The real world. I'm seeing the real world lately. And it's not a few folks living out of a van. It's it's real people with real jobs and thousands and thousands of people with with very nice machines and very nice RVs are out here. They are the majority. And so uh I and and, and sometimes I feel like I have to apologize because Sherry and I make decent, you know, income, and, and that's not right. I, I, it's like I'm like I'm offending folks or something. Uh, we paid our dues. We raised our kids. We 
did a few things right. Not perfect. We made some mistakes. Sure, he's still working stuff, but you know what? We're living really comfortable, and we're in a fifth wheel. And you know what? We could buy a house right now. We could do it. We could buy a house, whatever we want. And at this age, you have to ask yourself, really? Do I really want to do that or have this option to say, you know what? Just like Sherry and I are going from Washington to Arizona, and she's going to do some work down there. We can do it. And it wasn't a big deal at all, at all. Are we low class or, or we, we want to look at it that way? Heck no. <laughs> so video wise, maybe we are. But you come out here and look like this has got at least 900 spaces here. And they're full of professional, real people with real income and uh, living comfortable and happy. Happy as can be with really nice living quarters. So I don't know why I have to bring that up, but I feel like I'm trying to justify the fact that we we're just out here having a good time. We enjoy good food. We enjoy entertainment. And we're going to continue to do those kind of videos. And we'll talk about some of the equipment we use and all that stuff. But we're not trying to be the uh, fugled kind of folks. Or we're not trying to have compost toilets and stuff. We are just happy being happy so anyway i just had to put my two cents in there well it's getting time to wrap up the show here i really want to take the time to thank you for listening please remember you can watch us on your cell phone now or listen to us and you can watch our show on youtube but if you really want the great experience of enjoying podcasts, use your cell phone and, and get the free, you know, sign up for a free um, application to watch podcasts. And like I said, just you don't have to just watch ours or listen to ours. You can, there's all kinds of great podcasts out there. We're just one of many. Could be thousands. I don't know. But uh, we really appreciate you watching and listening to our shows. We appreciate the comments and the feedback. We try to do our best. We're not perfect. We are trying new things, new kinds of ideas, 360 cameras, and it's, it's rocking the boat a little. We're uh, just out here doing our thing, and I hope uh, we inspire fo folks to do the same. We do not tell people you got to do this uh you got to find out if it works out for you and we might change and go back to stick built house who knows uh, it's all open everybody's life is a little different but anyway think it over might be the kind of lifestyle you like if you have questions or would like to get more feedback from me and sherry we'd be happy to talk with you and share our experiences with you and, of course, we'd interview you, kind of find out what's your situation. It's different for everybody. <laughs> and you won't believe the stories out here either. You just Some of the things like, really? That's why you're in an RV. That makes sense. But anyway, getting back to you, you, our listeners, thank you. Thank you very much. We really enjoy having you. And we ask you, if you would, take the time to uh, subscribe to our show would you please share our show with other people? Uh, it really helps us out. And if you're listening to us on YouTube, would you also subscribe to us? We'd appreciate it. And, and throw us up on your social network, on your Facebook or Twitter, and let people know we're out here. Uh, we just can't thank you enough. So I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Nice that you joined us today, and we'll talk to you next Monday. Bye now. Mm -hmm.